Hi guys, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about recreating yourself after divorce. Now, I'm gonna share my experiences on how in two short years, I've completely turned my life around so that I'm healthy, financially stable, and remarried with a great marriage to an awesome woman. You know, after going through one hell of a divorce. After my divorce process was over, my life was in shambles. I had health problems like diabetes and high blood pressure and kidney failure. I was in heavy debt and my emotional health was shredded. After an 18 year difficult marriage, I was totally lost and I didn't know who I was and I had completely lost my way. So and the first thing I did was spend time alone with myself. I took out a pen and paper and started writing in a stream of consciousness type of way. And I asked myself some, you know, very hard questions. I mean, what did I want in the last 25 years of my life? Did I want someone with me to share my life? How was I going to live? Where was I going to live? How was I going to parent my children? So I wrote it all down in the most detailed way I could because I wanted a clear picture of what I wanted so that I could make plans on how to get there while battling feelings of low self-esteem, sadness, and anger. Now doing this led me to the second thing I did was I took stock of me. If I'm going to live another 20 to 25 years, I had to spend time thinking about how to take care of my body my mind, and my emotions. I wrote it all down like making a conscious decision to eat better, exercise, and take supplements, and invested in ways to reduce my stress like meditation and spending time with friends and of course my kids. Now, the third thing and the hardest thing I did was I forgave myself. I forgave my ex-wife. Uh, I accepted the responsibility to fix my life and be patient with myself when I stumbled or let myself down if I didn't do something I was supposed to do. This led to some amazing results. I found that I love to do stand-up comedy, something I never would have considered when I was married because I never had the desire to get up on stage and tell jokes. Now, it's normal for me to sit down, write jokes, and go on open mics and try them out. I've bombed. <laughs> uh, people have heckled me. Uh, I've gotten a lot of jokes that didn't work out, but I don't care. Something deep inside of me is fulfilled when I do stand-up comedy. It's therapeutic and I feel the quality of my life go up when I do it. So another miraculous thing that happened is that my health stabilized. I used to have uncontrolled diabetes and I was on a bunch of medications, but it didn't work. My doctor kept upping my medication, but my blood sugar still kept going up and up and up. Now my diabetes is under control and I don't have to take as many medications to get normal. It's truly miraculous because I was dealing with this for over a decade. My high blood pressure is stabilized and I had taken, you know, was taken off some of my meds. My kidneys are doing better so the risk of kidney failure is less and less of a possibility. But more important than that, I got remarried to a wonderful woman which I talked about in a previous video and now I have a wonderful loving marriage and there is no more fighting and drama ever. So, I never had to worry that I will be, die alone or ever be lonely for the rest of my life. Now, I know that some of you would say, well, that's great for you, but I can't even imagine that right now. And God, I completely understand. I definitely know how you feel because I've been there. But I'm here to tell you and offer you some hope that if you do what I did, you will see positive results in your life. Now, if this has been helpful to you, you know, like and subscribe for more videos that will help you on your journey and stay tuned for a clip of my comedy set to add a little bit of a chuckle to your day. Wow, as I look out at the crowd, I see a lot of Asian or non-Asian people here. I love the diversity. Right, Amaya? We're the only two. Asians. One more. One more. Oh, there you go. Three. So, as Dave said, my name is Divorced Asian Dad, and I am a piece of shit. At least that's what my mom tells me. And I'm her favorite. So, recently, I got in trouble with my parents because I told them that I do stand-up comedy. They laughed. 
my dad said, who said you were funny? <laughs> Your grandpa's funnier than you, and he's dead. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. And my mom said, do you even get paid for doing comedy? And I said, Mom, I do stand-up comedy. Of course I don't get paid. <laughs> I'm lucky to get a glass of water. <laughs> now, this wouldn't happen if I had white parents. You know? My, my parents would say, Trevor, Trevor's my white name. <laughs> we are so proud of you for expressing your artistic side. Good job, buddy. My Asian parents would say, you're going to starve. We old. We can't take care of your not so funny ass. Of course, I'm translating. It's harsher in Filipino. <laughs> now, Asian parents get a bad rap for making their kids become doctors and lawyers and engineers. And I'm here to tell you, it's all true. Asian parents suck. Take me, for instance. I was horrible at science and math. Horrible. But I still became an eye doctor. Why? Because my mom's guilt trips were so bad, it propelled me to beyond my potential. My friends are mystified. They know me. They think I'm the village idiot. <laughs> now, so I hung out with all the overachievers in high school, and they, become, they became like scientists and professors and PhDs, and they all promised to give me a you know, job at their office as the janitor. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's not bad to be a doctor. I mean, it's a very worthy and noble profession if the Asian kid picks it. Now, I can tell you on my side, there's a lot of, a lot of Asian doctors that are repressed comics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, how do you know that your doctor is a repressed comic? <laughs> well, if they missed their daughter's graduation because they were writing dick jokes, that's one. <laughs> when their Yelp review said, doctor kept me in stitches, but screwed up my eye exam. <laughs> me, this guy, right here. <laughs> Or the neurosurgeon canceled his brain surgery because he had a seven o'clock comedy show to go to. <laughs> now, I did what my parents told me, and like I said, I became a doctor. But you know what I want my kids to be? YouTube and TikTok influencers. <laughs> Screw medicine, that's where the real money's at. I mean, if 20-somethings can make multi-million dollars, and I'm riding around in a Honda Civic? I'm joining that team. <laughs> so follow me on www.divorcedasiandad.com slash give me your money. <laughs> now, I understand that, well, let me back up here a little bit. Now, my retirement plan is that my, you know, my kids uh, get rich off of YouTube and social media. I mean, you know, and I'll sponge off of them, right? That's my plan. My parents have a similar plan, but their plan is a fantasy because I'm broke. I'm so broke, I'm on the Nigerians do not call list. <laughs> now, I make fun of Asian parents, but you know, I understand. I mean, a lot of them are immigrants, they come from third world nations, and they have that survival mentality, you know? But this is America. This is the greatest country in the world. Slack off a little bit. <laughs> Pay a bill late. Smoke some weed, <laughs> okay? Give your kids a break. And if you don't got weed, ask them. They've been smoking to cope with you. <laughs> All right, that's my time. Divorce Station Dad.
Alright, the voice station's in.